This morning we are covering a major collision on a Wisconsin interstate. What we're learning about the drivers involved and the closure that will impact traffic today. The man accused of stabbing a teenager to death and injuring several others at a Wisconsin tubing company now entering his plea. And mild conditions outside. I'll break down how warm it will get today and those rain chances this weekend. You made it, folks. It's Friday. Good morning. Welcome to News 3 Now this morning. Thanks for starting your day off with us. I'm Leah Lynchine. And I'm Chris Stanford. Friday morning, everybody's getting their weekend plans set. Gonna need to plan around a bunch of rain we could get this weekend, Greg. Yeah, yeah. Sunday especially. It could be kind of wet and actually quite a bit. Two to three inches maybe in some areas. So Yikes. it's going to be, uh, Sunday's going to be the day to stay inside. Obviously the Packer game is in the Dome in go. Minneapolis. And they, they won't have it, but uh, thank God maybe it's not at the Lambeau Field this week. It might be a little bit of a mess. Overall, like I said, temperatures right now are actually fairly good. Low 60s most areas, some upper 50s now. We've had some lower dew points, so it's uh, allowed temperatures to cool off a little bit in certain areas. As we zoom into the Dane County area, we're still sitting around 60 degrees, 64 Sauk City, 61 Perry, and then we have some upper 50s to get further to the southeast. So overall, we're staying comfortable this time. Average temperature right now should be about 54 in the morning. 64 degrees right now, south wind at about 9, and a dew point lower down to 57, which allowed our temperatures to fall off nice. Drive issues, no issues on Highway 12 right now, but for most of the area, we have not seen any visibility issues either, so it should be good commute to come in. Overall, we're going to see temperatures climb up to about 77 degrees by noon under high uh, clear skies, some hazy conditions. The things to watch for today, warm still, mid-August temperatures. Badger game, like we already spoke, kind of spotty with the showers, more heavy rain there afterwards. And yes, a wet Sunday, maybe heavy rain, and I'll, I'll explain all of this here in a little bit later in the broadcast, you guys. All right, sounds good, Greg, thank you. To our top story this morning, new horrifying video into the newsroom of a deadly crash involving two semis on the interstate about an hour north of Milwaukee. The Ozaukee County Sheriff says one of the semis drifted off into the opposite lane and hit the other. Take a look at this, this crash killed both drivers. A witness stopped to see if he could offer some help, but the cab of the trucks were engulfed in flames and the tires were exploding. This morning, I-43 between Port Washington and Belgium is closed until further notice. Around the state this morning, on the border just east of the Twin Cities, the man accused of killing a teenager and injuring four others while they were tubing this summer, pleading not guilty in court this week. 52-year-old Nicolay Mew is charged with first-degree intentional homicide and four counts of attempted homicide. Authorities say he attacked a group of tubers on Apple River back in July, killing 17-year-old Isaac Schumann. Mew claims he was attacked and that he was acting in self-defense. We have a warning for you from the Department of Transportation this morning. They say more messages like this have been sent out recently in a phishing scheme. The scheme impersonates the DMV, the message claiming that the recipient is entitled to fee refunds with a link to reclaim the money. People should not click on the link or reply to the text. A federal judge will allow an oil and gas pipeline to continue to flow on a northern Wisconsin Indian reservation while its operators work to reroute the line. The Bad River Band of Lake, Chippewa, Lake Superior Chippewa sued Enbridge in 2019, demanding it remove the section of line that runs across the tribe's reservation in Ashland County. The tribe is concerned the pipeline could rupture and contaminate its drinking water. Enbridge has been working on a 40-mile reroute. Agreements have already been reached with all the private landowners along that new route. Continuing coverage now, a board member in the village of Holman is on a leaked list tied to the extremist group, the Oath Keepers. According to the Anti-Defamation League, board member Rodney Stenick is uh, one of six elected officials in Wisconsin that paid membership dues for the group. He responded to the allegations, claiming that he had subscribed because he shared the same ideology with the group. He says he never attended meetings and never communicated with the group, though. Stanek has since condemned the actions of the group over the last few years. The Oath Keepers list includes 38,000 names, including 340 members of law enforcement and 80 public officials or candidates. Continuing coverage this morning, a conservative activist in Wisconsin making his first court appearance on voter fraud charges. 68-year-old Harry Waite from Racine County has been charged with two counts of election fraud and two counts of unauthorized use of a person's uh, in identifying information. Waite was caught requesting absentee ballots for two people without their permission. He says he was trying to prove the system is broken. Steve Bannon, a longtime ally of former President Trump, 
has pleaded not guilty to fraud charges. Bannon is charged with money laundering, conspiracy, and scheming to defraud donors who wanted to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. The former White House chief strategist was convicted this summer of contempt in the January 6th investigation. Sentencing in that case is scheduled for October. Bannon faces a minimum of 30 days in jail. A reality check now ahead of the midterms. A new attack ad from the Ron Johnson campaign targets Mandela Barnes on his stance on defunding the police and abolishing ICE. Our political reporter Will Keneally looks into the claims and whether the ad is accurate. The ad was released by Ron Johnson's campaign and the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Mandela Barnes would eagerly join their squad. And ties Mandela Barnes to the squad, which is some of the most liberal members of Congress, including Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It says Barnes and the squad want to abolish ICE and defund the police in the face of rising crime. And the claim is a little complicated. It stems from this picture, where Mandela Barnes is holding an Abolish ICE shirt from the Democratic Socialists of America. Barnes wanted to abolish ICE. The claim is close, but needs a little clarification. Barnes does not say that he wants to abolish ICE, but he does say that he wants comprehensive reform to immigration and border control. This sets him apart from other Democrats, like Wisconsin's Mark Pocan, for example, who clearly say that they want to abolish ICE. The Socialist Squad is leading the charge to defund our police. For his part, Barnes says he wants to give the police more tools to do their job, like more training and using social workers for some calls. No surprise, crime is on the rise. That's true for some crimes. Homicides and car thefts have risen dramatically since 2019, according to data from the Department of Justice. Other crimes like burglaries have decreased slightly in recent years. So where does this come from? A recent Marquette poll shows that crime is a top issue among Republican voters. So this could be in an effort to drive Republican turnout. With this reality check, I'm Will Keneally. Looking ahead now, former Wisconsin Supreme Court Justice Dan Kelly, who served four years before losing election in 2020, announcing he's going to run again for an open spot on the court next year. Kelly, a conservative, joins two liberals who previously announced their candidacies. Those are Dane County Circuit Judge Everett Mitchell and Milwaukee County Circuit Judge Janet Protasiewicz. The top two vote getters in the February primary will advance onto the April election. Just about 6.07 on your Friday. Coming up, problems for a new electric scooter company in Rock County. And we're hanging out in the lambing barn here at Jefferson County Fair Park. You can see the sheep eating, kind of like me every morning in the 608. Coming up, we're going to see some of the cutest new additions here at the Fair Park when we come back. Stick around. Culligan Water delivers from your first call to your first sip to your first soak. Culligan. Give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. They say a good steak shouldn't be covered in sauce. That's why this prime rib is covered in fire-roasted peppers and provolone. But if you want sauce, it's in the bag. Arby's, we have the meat. So I climbed into the cab and then I settled down inside. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. Travel up ahead, my share, man. I've been everywhere. The garage door is America's new front door. So why not look at it in a whole new way? Let Precision's experienced designers come to you. Let us show you the difference a new Precision garage door can make. Precision door service, a name you can trust. The 2023 Ford F-150 trucks are coming. Meaning more ways to haul, tow, go, and do. And with more ways than ever to make it your own. Plus, if you order now, you'll lock in your price and lock in your rate. Do more in a 2023 Ford F-150. Custom order yours today. Lock in 2.9 for 60 and get 500 retail order bonus cash when you order a Ford F-150. Only at your Wisconsin and UP Ford dealers. Always have loved kids, like having a daycare, extending our family, having another kid, and just kind of made sense to do more improvements and add along the way. Having that availability to put back into our home from the home equity basically saved us. Got a, you know, privacy fence that's provides safety for our kids and the daycare kids, and yep. I don't got to put the dog on the leash anymore. It's a nice feeling letting my daycare just get out and just Play. run free. And that there is just another example that Tackle Freddie Union has had our back. 
Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel any time, and get moving. Go cardio crazy in our clean and spacious clubs. Jam out on the strength machines and get down with some dumbbells. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel any time. Deal ends Wednesday, September 14th. First, we found out that Radical Tim Michael supports Wisconsin's 1849 abortion ban. But you wouldn't support exceptions for rape or incest? Uh, that's correct. Now we found out his foundation funds a group working to outlaw birth control and ban abortion, even to save the life of the mother. And his family foundation funds a group that uses cell phone data to track women if they go to abortion centers. Vote no on Radical Tim Michaels. News 3 Now this morning. Welcome back. It is the premier event for sheep raisers and wool producers. And it's right here in the 608. Sure is. Josh Breider is live in Jefferson County this morning with a preview of the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival. Look at that, Josh. How adorable. <laughs> Isn't going? this so adorable, guys? Look at this. I can tell you guys are super jealous this morning. Look at this one. Born about 36 hours ago. You can tell it wants his mama. Mama's right over there in the pen yet. Again, right here, Jefferson County Fair Park, where the Wisconsin Sheep and Wolf Festival is about to get underway today through Sunday. We've got Todd Taylor. He is a research program manager for animal science at UW. And I mean, this is always a big hit here at this festival. Yes, yeah. So we do, we've done this, you know, like I said, about 18 of the last 20 years for the, for the festival. We've bred, bred used to lamb during this. and you Use them for just not only just public education, but also some of the outreach and extension programs that we do here during the week. And and uh, it's always a big draw for families to come see the baby lambs. So Something these they don't lambs, see every day. Yeah, these lambs born about 36 hours ago. Yep. They're so small. Yep, yep. So this little guy is a, is a triplet, actually, and his mom doesn't have quite enough milk to feed all three of them. So we're supplementing him. I've and got a bottle right here. We'll see if it takes any. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Look at oh, that. Looky there. So yeah, so he he's you know he's mama's feeding him a little bit. She's still taking good care of him. She's pretty nervous and wondering where he's at right now. But you know he's he's just getting a little extra extra help to make sure he grows like he needs to. And and uh, we'll see how he does through the through the fall months. So, so this festival really really important for the area. I mean, there's a huge local impact with this itself. Right. You know, it brings people from all over the the central United States, and we've even gotten people from coast to coast that have come and participated in this event. There's quite a few sheep shows that draw people from all over the United States to to come see the sheep themselves and and compete in the in the shows and and of course the dog trial. I don't know how far away people come for that. Um, but yeah, it's it's gotten to be. It just keeps growing. It, you know, we we had a setback with the COVID year when we had to cancel it. But it's you know it's kind of back and better than ever the last couple of years since we've been able to fire it back up. So, so yeah, underway again today. Why should people come check this out? Obviously, you have the lambing barn, but there's a lot more than just that. You know, the the sheep industry is is just kind of a, a hidden gem within the state of Wisconsin and within the the upper Midwest. And it's just something to come learn. I mean, it's it's a very diverse industry. You know, from from fiber to meat to milk all three products are produced by sheep throughout the the area one of the unique things about the livestock species of sheep is that we do get three products from them instead of some of the others that just focus on one or two products so um, so just come come learn talk to producers talk to hand spinners talk to the fiber arts people uh, the wool show go look at fleeces you can buy if you're in, into hand spinning you can purchase raw wool here or you can purchase products here that are already ready to be be spun into wool so I uh, put the little guy back with his mama he's getting home. Oh, nervous. Cool. So. I know. Here you so go, Mom. adorable. Well, Todd, so. thank you so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks guys, for coming out. This is so awesome. I wish you guys were here. This is amazing. And actually, they're being pretty quiet for us this morning. I expected a little bit more. What is it? Bleeding? Is that what yep. you call it? Yep. Yep. Talking to each other. Talking yep. to each other. We what? actually have Those seven scales. more due to lamb over the weekend. So hopefully oh we'll gosh. have some some potential live births before the weekend. Oh, my over, gosh. So. Well, that would be something to see. Yep. Well, Todd, yep. thanks again. If you guys want to learn more again here, Jefferson County Fair Park today through Sunday. Just go up to channel3000.com. I've got all the details for you up there. But how cute is this on a Friday morning, guys? Even you have to find that 36 cute. hours old. That's adorable. Come on. Josh, are you kidding They're me? They're so small. Uh, <laughs> very cool.
Uh, yeah, head to Jefferson County this weekend. Check it out. Josh Breider will talk with you uh, coming up here in just a little bit. Hoping Josh sneaks one under his coat <laughs> for me. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Remember to let Josh know what inspires you in the 608. You can reach out to him on social media or shoot him an email for a chance to be featured. What cute little guys. That'll cheer you up on a Friday. Okay, quarter after six now, a first worn weather note from out on the West Coast. K officially weakened to a tropical storm after landing in Mexico this week. Over the next 48 hours, the, storm, the storm is expected to weaken more as it moves into Southern California. This is rare for a tropical storm to hit the state. The National Weather Service says only 16 have come within 250 miles of San Diego since 1950, so over the last 70 years. Southern California could see a year's worth of rain this weekend. It's, of course, desperately needed there, but that much rain in such a short period of time will likely cause flash flooding. A uh, local weather note here, Dane County Schumacher Farm is rescheduling the Heritage Fest because of weather. It was originally scheduled to happen this Sunday. The new date is set for next Sunday, September 18th. The festival invites guests to participate in a lot of activities, including woodworking, knitting, cider making, and a lot more. Many different animals are also going to be there. Uh, tickets can be purchased at the event, $10. Uh, and for those over 16, uh, $5 uh, between the ages of 5 and 15. Uh, it's going to cost you a few bucks. I, I probably just totally screwed that up. The, the, the headline is that it is rescheduled for next Sunday because Sunday here is supposed to be pretty wet. Greg Barnard has been tracking those rain chances all week for us and is here to update us on the latest. Hey, Greg. Yeah, exactly. It is going to be wet. You mentioned, Kay, uh, just a quick blurb on that. We actually, you can see in the satellite down there, just rain starting to approach the San Diego just south of that area. So yeah, they will receive quite a bit of rain and actually strong winds too aloft in the mountains there too. So something rare that uh, they don't get too often. It will create a lot more moisture there. Otherwise, we're looking at the front. We're talking about the rain. That's one to the northwest of us. And then there's also moisture being pushed up from the south, which will interact with this front more like Sunday. So we do have the rain chances, like I said, come in. But for today, we got good conditions. We're going to just see winds continue out of the south. Temperatures get up to about the low 80s by this afternoon. Game time for tonight should be no problems. Suddenly winds, a few high clouds, but then going back down to the low 70s. The front actually is going to make its way in here tonight, but all the precipitation really is behind it or lagging of it. So we'll see uh, overnight conditions go down to about the mid 60s overall with a few cloud cover, but no precipitation is expected too. By tomorrow morning, once you wake up, we're going to see temperatures kind of come back up a little bit too. Overall, big picture for Saturday, and that's for the Badger game and then obviously the rain there afterwards. Here's the precipitation that's going to eventually approach by around noontime. It's going to come in, and thereafter, this whole line is going to continue to progress southeastward, and then individual waves along that line will then produce the rainfall that we'll see. So Badger game probably will start off with spotty showers, but then by the evening hours, we're going to start seeing a steady rain, even moderate rain potential, as you can see in the map down here coming up from the south. If we look at this, we can see future cracks showing the same type of thing Saturday coming through 1.30 p.m. By 2, it's over in Dane County, a break, but then you see that next wave coming up from the south. So evening Saturday night could actually be quite wet, light to moderate rain that we're looking at right now. Overall, you see rainfall amounts right now, we could be approaching two Two, maybe three inches by the time we get done with this, depending on where this line sets up, but something to keep a track of. It's going to be a very wet Sunday, and that could continue into Monday and then cooler, but then we'll probably see temperatures rise back to the mid upper 70s, maybe by the end of the week, and then unsettled by next weekend again, you guys. All right, Greg Barnhart, thank you very much. Oh, so the electric scooter company Bird has flown into Janesville. The company just introduced 75 of its electric scooters to the city. Some residents, though, say there have been issues with its launch. Our Catherine Merck spent yesterday in Rock County touching base with folks about the problems they've seen and what the city says it's doing to step in. On its website, the electric scooter company Bird advertises cleaner air, less traffic, more joy. Some Janesville residents say since the scooters have come to the city in August, they've seen just that for many young people. People just love riding them. I've seen positives when you see a, a mother with his son riding around, tooling around town. That's a good feeling. Everybody's got smiles on their faces. While these scooters have brought some fun to the city, they've also brought some issues. I've provided the city council and the city manager with over 140 photos of what I felt were violations. Skin marks, underage driving, more parking issues. That's the tagline Paul Murphy sees. I don't know as though Janesville 
is big enough for a third party scooter company. The city says it knows about these issues and is continuing to work things out with Bird, especially with underage driving. Because we have had such a problem with underage riders, Bird has turned on ID verification. The introduction is part of a pilot program that will continue through October. Until then, the city and its residents are hoping for fewer underage joy rides and more joy for everyone. In Janesville, I'm Katherine Merck with News 3 Now. We reached out to the company looking for more details about their conversations with the city, but we haven't heard back yet. Once we do, we'll update this story over on channel3000.com. 620 now coming up. Some inspiration to go on a hike today. And ahead in our next half hour, how Wisconsin plans to spend millions of dollars it's getting in an opioid settlement. Watch News 3 Now at 5 with Eric, Susan, and Gary. Weeknights. Cobus and Buses, now hiring. My name's Mike Williams. I've been driving school bus off and on for 21 years. Here at our terminal, we're kind of like a family too. Somebody has an issue with a bus, other people kick in and help and get the job done. Dear Senator Johnson, living on a fixed income, it's a struggle. I paid into Social Security and Medicare every paycheck. So it was a slap in the face when you voted to weaken Medicare. That would increase out-of-pocket costs. And when you wanted to let Wall Street gamble with Social Security. Senator Johnson, you look out for yourself and your fat cat donors, but have forgotten about us. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. I am crushing this to-do list. Let me see. Smart home upgrade? Mm -hmm. Home gym? Check. Well, what about the windows? Uh, Cross something important off your list. With energy-efficient windows for just $129 a month, now is the perfect time to get your home ready for fall. And keep some cash in your pocket. Windows for $129 a month and soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feltco. Backed by popular demand, Hy-Vee drive through Flu Shot Clinics. Just follow the signs in your Hy-Vee parking lot to get your flu shot right from your car. It's easy, convenient, and no appointment or prescription is necessary. drive through Flu Shots are offered on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 7 p.m. Or get your flu shot inside your Hy-Vee pharmacy at any time with no appointment necessary. Plus, when you get your flu shot at Hy-Vee, you get a 20 cent Hy-Vee fuel saver. Raising healthy children takes a village, and kids thrive when their village is healthy too. SSM Health and News 3 Now are helping you unlock a healthier world with our Time for Kids Keys to Health campaign. We'll show you how sustainable choices create healthier lifestyles, explore the impacts of food security on families, and share ways we can help build a healthy community together. So join us on air, online, and in your village. And take time for kids. other side will make up lies about me to scare you. Now they're claiming I want to defund the police and abolish ICE. That's a lie. I'll make sure our police have the resources and training they need to keep our community safe. And that our communities have the resources to stop crime before it happens. I'll bring back manufacturing. And I'll pass a middle class tax cut. And if that's too scary for Washington, then so be it. I'm Mandela Barnes, and I approve this message. Cobuson Buses, now hiring. Working with Cobuson, it's definitely been great because of the flexibility. If you do need time off, they work around you. They, they definitely try to make it a company that's based for you. Visit cobuson.com to apply. Welcome back. We always ask you to share your morning with us. Second Crop Creative posting two pictures of some nature on your Friday. Gorgeous picture. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I love animals. You guys know I just ooh and ah over these. Me you too. Know, the sheep and ducks. Why is it funny? I think he's being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. So my two, my soon-to-be two-year-old oh. is uh, learning animal sounds. Oh yeah. Okay. And duck is one that he gets. He gets the duck and it's, it's wah wah. Stop. He does that. Oh yeah. You know, wah wah. I got to meet Ben the other day, and he was, um, he was shy. He's pretty great. Wasn't quacking at me, but my gosh, what a cute boy. Yeah, he's getting so old. Yeah, two years old. That's crazy. Later this month. 
Uh, so thank you, Second Crop Creator, for sending in that picture. If you want to share your morning, use the hashtag MyNews3Morning when you post on social media. Chris, partial to kids over animals. Can't blame them. <laughs> and a good barn. Kids. I love old barns. And a good barn. Who doesn't love a yeah. good barn? Hey, trending this morning. Six months later, and a Minnesota man is finishing his hike of the entire Appalachian Trail. Very impressive here. Uh, so back in March, Egon Overhard started his journey down in Georgia. This is a 2,000-mile trail, folks. Overhard's hike will end in Maine this month. He says he did it for his late wife of 57 years, Carol. She lost her battle to terminal illness last winter. During his hike, he found that the trail becomes actually pretty hilly. Sometimes he has to go over boulders. During his journey, Overhard uh, often covered 15 to 17 miles every day. How inspiring, 78 years old and taking on such a challenge. I mean, that's a, I'm not a hiker, surprise, surprise. But that sounds like a lot of miles to take on in one day. And I think you have to, you know, you have to camp the entire time, pack mm -hmm. your food, try and figure that out okay. for Greg, several months. Greg, you a hiker? I've hiked the Ruby Mountains when I was out west. And Did you? Can, you? You can do 30 miles. I think it's 30 miles, so you can camp out along the ridge top all the time. So, But I haven't done that. It was just daytime hikes, really, three to four miles. So I haven't done that quite that extensive. Oh, this is impressive. Uh, what a story. What a journey. Uh, what a cost. What a reason to do it. Yeah, that's wonderful. Love everything about Goals. it. Goals. All right, so this morning, if anybody's headed out for a hike, uh, pretty decent conditions today out there, nice. Greg. Yeah. Uh, actually, today will be really nice. Um, and we got your bus forecast, too, right there. And there's no issues there. Going up to about 80 this afternoon, similar to yesterday, hazy skies. But the football tonight, once again, no issues with that. Um, but then rain will be for the Badger game, which I don't have right here. You'll see on the 10-day that, yes, Sunday's going to be wet. So if you want to do the hiking, today's the day. Tomorrow, eh, maybe morning. But Sunday, it's going to be a wet, wet day. All right, thanks, Greg. Uh, more on that forecast and your headlines coming up right after this. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. iMart Express owns selection, price, and speed. Need single vision? Get two pairs starting under 40 bucks. Progressives, two pairs start under 80. Nobody beats us guaranteed. iMart Express. Right classes, right price, right now. So I climbed into the cab and then I settled down inside. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've traveled, I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. If you have advanced non-small cell lung cancer, your first treatment could be a chemo-free combination of two immunotherapies that works differently. It could mean a chance to live longer. Optiva Plus Your Voice for adults newly diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer that is spread, test positive for pd one and does not have an abnormal EGFR or ALK gene. Together, Optiva Plus Your Voice helps your immune system launch a response that fights cancer in two different ways. Optiva Plus Your Voice equals a chance for more time together, more family time, more time to remember. Optivo and Yervoy can cause your immune system to harm healthy parts of your body during and after treatment. These problems can be severe and lead to death. See your doctor right away if you have a cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, irregular heartbeat, diarrhea, constipation, severe stomach pain, nausea or vomiting, dizziness, fainting, eye problems, extreme tiredness, changes in appetite, thirst or urine, rash, itching, confusion, memory problems, muscle pain or weakness, joint pain, flushing or fever. These are not all the possible side effects. Problems can occur together and more often when Optivo is used with Yervoy. Tell your doctor about all medical conditions, including immune or nervous system problems, if you've had or plan to have an organ or stem cell transplant or received chest radiation. Here's to a chance to live longer. Ask your doctor about the combination of two immunotherapies, Optivo plus Yervoy. Thank you to all those in our clinical trials. This Labor Day, brighten your home with Cabot Exterior Stains and HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams Paints. And now, buy one, get one 50% off via rebate. Shop Labor Day savings today. Morning, noon, night. Indulgent, delicious, irresistible. Fancy Feast makes delighting your cat delightfully easy. Every recipe, every last detail. Another fancy way to show your love. Fancy Feast. Give your cat the world with globally inspired medleys. 
The Socialist Squad led the charge to defund the police and eliminate bail for dangerous felons. Now violent crime is surging in Wisconsin. More people have been killed in Milwaukee this year than in any previous year. Mandela Barnes attacked the Kenosha police and incited more violence. The officer's deadly actions attempted to take a person's life in broad daylight. This felt like some sort of vendetta. Mandela Barnes, dangerously liberal on crime. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. How do we make your glasses the same day? It's all done in store. Our skilled techs handle your glasses from start to finish, getting them back the same day. Quality, affordable glasses made in store only at iMart Express. Right now, a grocery store could be coming to the south side of Madison to help avoid a food desert in the area. Also, more on the death of Queen Elizabeth. What's next as the world remembers an icon? And hazy skies out there creating a beautiful sunrise, and I'll explain why that's the case in a little bit. Good morning, everyone. Hey, it's Friday, folks. That's exciting. We made it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Chris Stanford. And I'm Leah Linshai. Just a gorgeous sunrise out there this morning. You can see it out there right there behind yeah. us. Yeah, not just because <laughs> it's Friday, which we're all excited True. about, but because of the smoke that's yes. wandered into our area. It actually came yesterday. You kind of see the skies were sky, uh, yeah, hazy. And if you notice, the sunset yesterday was kind of good, but you can see the sunrise is also going to be kind of wow. nice for the next few. Well, well, probably today and then tomorrow, obviously more clouds will actually interfere with that. But as we look at where this smoke is actually coming from, it's from the west. The fires, all these dots are active fires uh, pretty much in northern Idaho, Montana, and Oregon that got swept up with the southwest winds aloft ahead of the system. So that actually allowed smoke to come over overhead of us and we'll see that through today but then obviously it's going to thin out and then we'll have clouds and rain that will actually get rid of that here on Saturday so probably enjoy it today and then we won't be around here much longer otherwise temperatures right now we're looking at 60 degrees upper 50s in some locations as you step out the door today really it's going to be sunglasses hazy skies warm conditions all this rain stuff that's going to be waiting for at least another 24 hours and then actually it'll be something to think about so we'll get up to about 83 today Remember, mid-70s is our average temp, so we are above average. And then the three things, remember, warm, hazy today, so high school football should be good to go. Badger game, not so much with the showers. And then Patriots Day, very wet, so it's a good day to enjoy the Packer game and stay inside, you guys. All right, Greg Barnhart, thank you very much. Talk to you in a bit. New this morning, arrest warrants are out for two brothers in connection to a shooting at a Madison gas station. LeVar Reed Jr., 26, faces charges of attempted first-degree intentional homicide, while his brother Varshawn Reed, 24, faces a charge of armed robbery as a party to a crime. This is a shooting that happened at the Amico on Willie Street last October. The victim believed to have been meeting Varshawn Reed for a marijuana drug deal. According to the criminal complaint, the older brother got into the victim's car instead and shot him and took the drugs. On the south side of Madison, officials are finalizing negotiations with a new grocery store set to open as soon as next year. The area is at risk of becoming a food desert right now. The Pick and Save on Cedar Street in that neck of the woods is the only grocery store in South Madison, and it's closing soon. Now, Moore's Urban Market is going to open up on the block. It's going to be a 24,000 square foot full service grocery store. It's roughly the same size as Pick and Save. So it'll be a full service in that you'll be able to get the types of items that you would get at, at Pick and Save, so and at a similar price point. The city of Madison still has to complete the purchase for, of the grocery store space from the developer, which they'll then lease to Mora. That should be wrapped up by the end of this year. The bottom line is more Dane County residents than ever before are dying from drug poisoning. And just one pill laced with fentanyl or another synthetic opioid can kill. Medication. That was Dane County Executive Joe Parisi. He has a new plan to combat the opioid and fentanyl pandemic. It would direct $740 million toward the cause. In his budget proposal, Parisi would also partner up with community groups to do more uh, wide distribution of Narcan and fentanyl test strips. It would also help fund new efforts to educate the community about the dangers of drugs. The county board would still need to approve the plan. There is a much more detailed breakdown of this up right now at channel3000.com. Meantime, the state has a plan to spend $31 million that it won in an opioid lawsuit. Republicans say that they held up the funds that the state won because the governor's proposal didn't include enough spending for law enforcement. Republicans ended up moving money from K-12 
addiction prevention, family support centers, and building improvements to create a law enforcement grant. That money can go toward local law enforcement initiatives like addiction treatment in jails. I want to pass this, get the money out the door today. Just get it to where it needs to be. Democrats still voted for the plan, saying that they want this money to be spent right away. The funding is part of a much larger $400 million settlement that Wisconsin won in an opioid suit. The state itself received $31 million this year. Leaders at UW-Madison are condemning anti-Semitic messages written in shock at locations around campus on the first day of classes. The vice and deputy vice chancellor writing in a joint statement, quote, to those Jewish students who were affected, we are sorry for the impact this had on your first day of class. We truly strive to create a campus where every student feels like they belong, and this kind of messaging harms that goal. The slurs apparently targeted Jewish student groups, calling them racist and genocidal. All right, more now on the passing of the Queen. Uh, former uh, British Prime Minister uh, Boris Johnson speaking live right now in Parliament uh, as the country and the world mourns the passing of Queen Elizabeth. Right now, King Charles is on his way from Scotland to London. He will speak uh, to the world today. We will hear from him for the first time as king today. Uh, he will address everyone in a pre-recorded message at noon our time. Buckingham Palace says the new monarch will be known as King Charles III. The Queen's final public appearance just came on Tuesday when she appointed Britain's new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. The Queen is expected to remain in Scotland over the weekend. Then she will be flown to London, where her coffin will lie in state for four days for the public to pay respects. Happening tomorrow, Madison Police, Fire and the Red Cross are hosting the 11th Annual Community Blood Drive. The Never Forget Blood Drive honors the lives of those lost in the terror attacks on 9-11. Organizers are hoping they'll receive their 1,000th donation since the tradition started back in 2011. The drive takes place tomorrow at Madison Fire Station 14 from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'd love it if you would stop by. Appointments are encouraged. They do accept walk-ups as well. Tens of thousands of responders are dealing with chronic health issues after their exposure to toxic dust and debris after the September 11 terror attacks. The Stony Brook World Trade Center Wellness Program sees thousands of responders with conditions such as obstructive airway disease, asthma, cancer, PTSD, and depression. They're even researching long COVID in first responders. Now that we've been able to follow these patients for as long as a year, we find about 15% of our patients continue to have problems with long COVID. Another recent study suggests that responders with PTSD could be affected by a specific form of dementia. 636 on your Friday morning, taking a look outside. We will keep you updated on the traffic in the Dane County area. And the big story this weekend is going to be those rain chances. And if we could see a wet Badger football game Saturday. Speaking of football, Zach Hanley bringing us the coach of the week from Stoughton this morning. Plus, we're in the 608 this morning with a preview of the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival. They're celebrating 20 years, and we're going to show you the local impact with fiber coming up. hy V hot deals are super hot this Friday through Sunday. Our special recipe brats, eight for only $12. Plus, get a 16-cent fuel saver. And Doritos or Ruffles, only $1.88 each when you buy two. Check out hy deals.com for more deals. Think crime is bad now? Mandela Barnes would make it worse. Barnes would eliminate cash bail even after the Waukesha Christmas Parade attack, supports amnesty and sanctuary cities for illegals, and had worked for a radical group that wants to defund the police. Barnes has a long record of smearing police while spending your tax dollars on security for himself. Mandela Barnes, wrong on crime. Dangerous for Wisconsin. Senate Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Now's the perfect time to get your roofing project off the ground with Feldco. As the seasons change, you want to be sure your house is ready for the harsh Midwestern weather ahead. For just $2.79 a month, you can protect your home and your family with a new Feldco roof. So get your fall started off on the right foot today with Feldco. Roofing for $2.79 a month and soon. Hurry, call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feldco. 
In 1983, Senator Johnson's daughter was born with a serious heart defect. Dedicated doctors and nurses saved her life. Family became the most important thing in his life, and it still is. He has always enjoyed the simple things in life, the outdoors, fishing, hiking, camping, cross-country skiing, Packer and Badger games, rec league softball, and playing guitar. And did I mention fishing? As a U.S. Senator, he fought to secure tax cuts for 95% of American Main Street businesses so they could stay competitive with the big guys and survive the pandemic. His right to try law has given terminal patients freedom and hope and saved many lives. And his Joseph Project has transformed lives by helping people get good paying jobs and be proud of earning their own success. Senator Johnson went to Washington for all the right reasons. I should know because I am that daughter and I've been watching my dad help others for 39 years. I'm Ron Johnson and I approve this message. hy V hot deals are super hot. It's Friday through Sunday. General Mills family size cereal, only $1.99. That smart cottage cheese, only 99 cents. And Hy-Vee One Step Potatoes, only 99 cents. Check out HyVeeDeals.com for more deals. It all comes down to the final drive. News 3 Now brings you the big play highlights and scores from Southern Wisconsin high school football action. Don't miss the final drive. Fridays on News 3 Now at 10. Help us pack the truck to kick off Coats for Kids. September 12th, look for the big truck at Clinky Cleaners on Monona Drive. News 3 Now and the CAC will be there all day collecting kids-sized winter coats. Help kids stay warm this winter. Let's pack the truck for Coats for Kids. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. Boy, it is going to be a busy weekend. There's so much going on, including the sheep raisers and a wool producers uh, big get together that's going on in the 608. Oh yeah, we are of course talking about the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival in Jefferson County this weekend. Josh has a preview. Hey Josh. Hey guys, good morning. Yeah, we're coming to you from the Jefferson County Fair Park. And we've got a tree for you today. You can see we're standing right now in the vendor barn. More than 130 vendors are going to be right here in Jefferson County from all across the area this weekend. This morning, Rob Setner is up early with us. And Rob, you are with Wool, Warp, and Wheel. You've been doing this for, what, 19 years now? 19 years. What keeps you coming back? Well, what keeps it coming back is Fiber is always new. You can always do something different with it. You can make different things. The fashions are changing. Everything changes. There's always something different. So Rob, talk about what Randy is sitting on here. We met Randy last hour. What is this? This is a bench picker. It's used to help remove the vegetable matter from the wool before you spin it. So if you open the bench picker, you'll see it's got a few little nails and what that's going to do we're going to draw the fiber through and all the vegetable matter will end up here and the clean the fiber will be cleaned let's see it in action there look at that as it goes back and forth the fiber advances through the vegetable matter falls out and then you end up with wool that you can card and spin and then that's what kind of leads you to what to you what see you can right do with it so what exactly do you guys do here with your business? We are a retail outlet. We sell all types of equipment and tools and fiber. Anything from raw fiber, spinning wheels, knitting needles, to finished yarns and finished goods. So I want you to grab that right there because we've got a lot of Green Bay fans in the area. Talk about that and what it took for you to make that. This is hand woven. It was done on a loom in our shop. Uh, it's 100% wool, and that's about eight hours of work to complete the scarf. Eight hours. Eight hours. Look to at start that. To warp the loom, set the pattern, and complete the weaving. So, I mean, this is so huge. I'm going to put that on because that looks good. Try not to hit the microphone here. You know, this is this is so cool. I mean, eight hours of work, and this is huge. Like, I think people need to know how important the fiber industry still is today. The fiber industry is very dynamic. A um, lot of synthetics are used now for clothing in that, but the true warmth and true protection is in wool. Wool is fire resistant. It will only burn while there's an ignition source with it. If you're dressed in polyester or nylon, 
and you're near a fire, that will melt into your skin. Wool will not. That's why during the Civil War, the uniforms were made of wool. So the soldiers wouldn't ignite when they got hit with cannon fire. And of course, here in Wisconsin, we like the wool for the heat, right? During the winter for the, time? For the heat, wool will keep you warm in the, su in the winter and it will keep you cool in the summer. Wool will keep you warm while it's wet. It can hold 30% of its weight and retain warmth, which is something that cottons can't do. Hunting is big in Wisconsin. Wool socks, wool gloves, wool hats, that's what the hunters need to really keep warm. Very good. Well, Rob, thank you so much. We appreciate all of your expertise this morning. I appreciate you coming out. Yeah, you bet. Come check out the Wisconsin Sheep and Wolf Festival happening now through Sunday here, guys, at Jefferson County Fair Park. Look at this. I hope none of my Minnesota folks are watching this morning because this thing does look pretty nice on me. Green and gold uh, does suit you very well. What's, what's the price tag on that thing? Could you look at the price for us? What is the price tag on this? Rob, we got 80 bucks on 80 that. Bucks. 80 bucks, come and get it here. I do see there is a, uh, now that I see this, we do have a purple one here too. You can just so. put that one down. You know, Less you don't attractive. Need, we don't need this. Hint, Less hint. Put it down, Josh. <laughs> All right, learning a lot this morning. Josh Ryder, live in Jefferson County this morning. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, I learned some things there. That was really interesting. All right, remember to let Josh know what inspires you in the 608. You can reach out to him on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or shoot him an email. All right. Quarter to seven. Let's take a look at traffic. Hey, Greg. Hey, well, traffic, no issues. Like I said, we have no visibility issues going on, no fog to speak of. So overall, there's no incidents or accidents going on. So just normal traffic. So it actually is a good morning. Real beautiful sunrise you see out there with the smoke helping to make it really pretty right now. Well, track today, as we saw, the temperatures are going to climb up with the silly winds to about the low 80s this afternoon. Most areas will see that. By the time you go home and the time we start high school football tonight, a few clouds will start increasing and overall the temperatures will decrease. The front will start making its way in, but the precipitation the rain and all that will lag farther to the west. So it won't be a problem tonight or even tomorrow morning. So as you wake up, go through tonight and then tomorrow you wake up, it'll be mid 60s, cloud cover, still that south wind, but that front will be kind of right just south or southeast of Madison by this time. Once again, the precipitation's further back, so we won't be impacted yet by that. It'll be as we go look at a wider view, these are lines of showers, thunderstorms along the, the boundary as it pushes east, and they'll continue to develop, weaken, and as they push through here, we're looking at the time frame about Saturday noon to then thereafter as we're gonna start seeing a line of showers and thunderstorms develop, and it could be moderate to heavy rainfall as we work our way past Saturday evening into Saturday night. Something to keep an eye on, especially Madison area and southeastward looks like that's kind of the trend right now for the heavier rainfall. If you zoom in, you can see temperatures uh, tomorrow, the precipitation begins to push in Saturday afternoon, and then we're looking at the Badger game, showers, and then probably more steadier rain as you go towards the later half of the game and to the evening, so something to keep an eye on. And then you see a next batch coming up towards Saturday night, which once again, could be some quite heavy rain. And we're looking maybe potentially one to two inches, even more, with most of the areas picking up at least a half inch. So something to keep in mind as we go through uh, Sunday into Monday is the potential for some quite a bit of rain. And although we are about three quarters of an inch below average for the month right now. Once we get past Sunday, we'll have some showers lingering into Monday, cooler Tuesday, but then warming back up for the middle of next week. And then maybe some rain chances next weekend, but nothing like what we're gonna be probably looking for Saturday night and Sunday night, which could be a all night washout and mm -hmm. some significant rainfall. Good to know. Greg, thank you very much. Stoughton prides itself on playing tough physical football, but that's not the only thing coach Jason Becker is teaching his team. Becker's big thing is having his Vikings use their platform for good in the community as a way to give back. Here's Zach Hanley with our coach of the week. There we go. Tough come on, come on, come on. is in their name. We're a tough and physical football team. Like you mean it, Cam? There it is. But tough football players aren't the only thing Jason Becker is building at Stoughton. We're not here just uh, you know, for those four years of high school. It's it's something that we want to be able to build uh, stewards within our community and beyond. Set, go. Earlier this season, the Vikings traded in their helmets. Oh yeah, I've never done like any paving or anything like that. For shovels. There was a family that had made a post on the on the neighborhood page about needing some help unloading some pavers off of a truck, and I thought, well, geez, you know, what a better opportunity 
than, you know, offering up the help of the football team. And helped install a wheelchair accessible path. It was originally we were going to just be moving the, the, the stuff for the path. Yeah. And then uh, we got there and they, we realized that they needed a little bit more help. So we kind of just took it under our wing and did the whole path ourselves. A job well done. A way to give back to their community. You run a bubble, okay? Because Stone's not the biggest community, so like, if we just have each other's backs, I feel like it'll just make the community even better. When we get back to the community, the community wants to give back to us. They want to watch our games. They have a reason to go. So it's kind of, uh, it's kind of just a win-win situation. And a skill Becker hopes his team takes with them. How's our Zach Hanley reporting this morning? Coming up in the morning sprint, what roads you're going to want to avoid in downtown Madison this weekend during Ironman Wisconsin? Yeah, if you got a little kiddo turning three soon, let us know so we can show their picture on TV. We're back after this. This portion of News 3 Now is sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Warren's, Wisconsin. With Pick and Save Fresh Perks, it's easy to get lower than low prices for the win. You also earn fuel points on every purchase to save big at the pump. Pick and save fresh perks. All you do is win big, big savings. Pick and save. Fresh for everyone. The Socialist Squad led the charge to defund the police and eliminate bail for dangerous felons. Now violent crime is surging in Wisconsin. More people have been killed in Milwaukee this year than in any previous year. Mandela Barnes attacked the Kenosha police and incited more violence. The officer's deadly actions attempted to take a person's life in broad daylight. This felt like some sort of vendetta. Mandela Barnes, dangerously liberal on crime. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. Menards is the destination for your bathroom project. Save on bath faucets from Moen. Moen faucets give you a lifetime of beauty, reliability, and innovative features. Right now, all Moen faucets are 11% off. Complete the look with Shaw Vinyl Plank Flooring. It has the look of tile or wood and is waterproof and easy to install, making it a perfect choice for your bathroom. Get 11% off all Shaw Flooring right now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. This month, shop Surgenian's semi-annual sale. We offer the largest Cortex selection in Madison. Carpet featuring Pet Solutions Nylon, Timeless Hardwood, and more. Surgenian's semi-annual sale has savings up to 25% in all departments. Local, sustainable Surgenian's. It's the all-new Subway Series menu. 12 irresistible new subs. The most epic sandwich roster ever created. It's Subway's biggest refresh yet. McGann Furniture and Flooring has a question for you. Do you have a hard time sleeping comfortably through the night? Is your mattress 10 years old or even older? Chances are you're due for a new one. Mattress technology has changed a lot in the last 10 years. Our experienced staff will help you find the right style, construction, and firmness that will give you years of sleeping comfort. And remember, we don't raise prices only to lower them later for a sale. With delivery and disposal of your old set, we make it easy to have the bed of your dreams at McGann Furniture and Flooring, downtown Baraboo. First, we found out that Radical Tim Michael supports Wisconsin's 1849 abortion ban. But you wouldn't support exceptions for rape or incest? Uh, that's correct. Now we found out his foundation funds a group working to outlaw birth control and ban abortion, even to save the life of the mother. And his family foundation funds a group that uses cell phone data to track women if they go to abortion centers. Vote no on Radical Tim Michaels. With the Pick and Save app, no matter where you order free pickup, you get the same great deals as you'd get in our stores. So start your cart today. Whenever, wherever. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Channel 3000 Plus, what from your streaming media player or mobile device? 6.52, time for the morning sprint. Some first warn traffic notes for your weekend plans as thousands plan to take in Ironman Wisconsin here in Madison. Racers will be swimming, biking, and running across the greater Dane County area. Things kicking off downtown at 6.45. As such, a stretch of John Nolan Drive is going to be closed all day for the biking portion. Near the Alliant Energy Center, the Rimrock Road ramps on and off the Beltline will also be closed along with Badger Road. And a number of other streets are closed for the running competition. You can find all the details over on channel. 3000.com. If you're headed to the Badger football game Saturday, make sure you dress for the stripe out. Each section of the stadium has been assigned either red or white to help coordinate 
Fans sitting in the student section are all wearing white. Kickoff Saturday, 2.30 against Washington State. We're hanging out at the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival ahead of its 20th year here at Jefferson County Fair Park. You can come on out this weekend now through Sunday to see what this is all about. Tickets right now are available. You can go up to channel3000.com to see how much of a local impact this has in the 608. Josh Breider, thank you very much. Happening right now overseas, the UK Parliament is holding a special session to honor the late Queen Elizabeth this morning. King Charles III is expected to deliver his first televised address today following the death of his mother. The 96-year-old died peacefully at Balmoral, her summer castle in Scotland. President Biden visited the British Embassy in Washington late yesterday, leaving a message in the condolence book. The English Premier League is also postponing all of its soccer games this weekend out of respect. The president also ordering flags at half-staff through sunset on the day of the Queen's funeral. Shortly after her death was announced, the White House delayed, then canceled President Biden's scheduled remarks about the coronavirus pandemic. The heads of the Department of Ag, Trade and Consumer Protection and the Department of Corrections getting a first-hand look at new facilities for the DOC's Waupon Farm and Dairy. The agriculture teams here have been recognized regularly for maintaining outstanding milk quality and commendable farm conditions. Agriculture is a $100 billion industry in Wisconsin. Secretary Romanski says keeping a well-trained workforce is important when it comes to keeping the system working. Dan County Medical Examiner's Office says a 35-year-old from Randolph was a person who died in a crash on Highway 151 over the weekend. Christopher Decker died at the scene of the crash. It happened just after 3 o'clock in the morning on Labor Day near County Highway Double V in the town of Bristol between Sun Prairie and Columbus. The medical examiner confirmed Decker died from his injuries in the crash. The Justice Department is appealing a federal judge's ruling to appoint a so-called special master to the case against President Trump. The lawyer would review documents the FBI seized from his Mar-a-Lago estate. The two sides were told to submit a proposed list of names for the special master due by today. The DOJ says it's also making plans to return any of Trump's personal items that might have been mixed in with classified documents. NASA has two new dates in mind for the next attempt at launching its massive new moon rocket on an uncrewed test mission. They are September 23rd or September 27th. It comes after two scrub launches last week over technical issues caused by leaking fuel. And we're looking at warm conditions today, uh, getting up to about 83 degrees with sunny skies, hazy. Football tonight looks great, no issues to speak of. Clouds hold off. Badger game is a different little story. We got showers coming in, so it could be wet by the time we get done, and especially towards Saturday night. Rain chances overall Saturday night. Sunday look pretty good. And then the 10 day, once we get past this, we'll actually learn, we'll see actually conditions improve Monday and Tuesday, cooler. And then maybe next chance of rain comes next weekend. Hoping the Badger game isn't too wet there, Greg. Uh, at least the start shouldn't be bad, but later half might be. Have a great weekend, folks.